Hello, everyone, and welcome back and welcome to some of you uh, to day one of the grant writing for every occasion workshop sponsored by YSHRAB, the Wyoming State Archives and the Wyoming State Library. For those just joining us, my name is Sarah Davis and I'm the Wyoming State Archivist and the YSHRAB coordinator. I will be moderating the sessions today and tomorrow. Uh, feel free to drop your questions in the chat box or send a direct chat to me uh, by hoovering over my name. Uh, we just completed session two, what's the problem and, and who are you? We will be getting session three, what will you do about it? This will be a discussion of objectives, methods, and evaluation. Coming up at 1230, please bring your questions to our open discussion and share your knowledge. At the end of this two-day workshop, we will send an email with links to the recordings of the workshop sessions, any additional sources from the workshop, including copies of the presentation slides, and a link to a survey to help provide feedback on the event, as well as help us put together future programming. This workshop is brought to you by the Wyoming State Historical Records Advisory Board and the Wyoming State Library is supported by, in part by an award from the YSHRAP through funding from the National Historic Publications and Records Commission, a division of the National Archives and Records Administration. The YSHRAP program is administered by the Wyoming State Archives, which is part of the Department of State Parks and Cultural Resources. The presenter for today's sessions is Susan Mark. Susan Mark is the outreach librarian at the Wyoming State Library. Susan is one of two coordinators for the Wyoming State Library's Library Service and Technology Act grants from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. She's written grants successively for nonprofits and state age government agencies, managed grant contracts, served on grant review committees, and conducted grant writing workshops. With that, I will turn it over to Susan. She has a few more technical aspects to share with you before diving into the main content. So uh, this, this is getting to the heart of the matter from most people's perspectives. What are you gonna do about this problem? Going back to the grant logic again, people need something, you've got a plan, you're the perfect organization, you just need the funds. And so to, for this session, we're going to go over object, goals and objectives, methods, which is your actual project, and evaluation, um, you know, and this really is what everybody loves to jump to uh, because you get excited about projects, right? So goals and objectives. This really is the change you want to see in the world. And if you've done your uh, grant funder research right, and you, if you have prioritized it properly, um, your funder wants the same change. So uh, sometimes goals and objectives are used interchangeably. Sometimes people say goals when they're really looking for objectives. The goals are more the broad overview of what you're trying to achieve over time. While the objectives are going to be much more specific to the grant project, they're going to be concrete outcomes or outputs. We'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, and the big thing is you need to be able to evaluate them, at least, at least most of them. Even a little bit of evaluation is better than none. Um, but uh, those are kind of your goals and objectives. And objectives might be outcomes, which is a change in the recipient's lives, uh, whereas outputs might be the numbers accessing the program or service. So, uh, you know, or you can employ a combo because you're going to have more than one objective. The thing is, is let's be real. You work in a library, you work in a museum, you cannot pre-test and post-test the people who come in to look at a display. Uh, it's just not happening. You can keep track of how many people see it. Uh, you can do a questionnaire afterwards, um, but outcomes can be fiendishly difficult to do. We do outcomes for our training that we do with federal money, very simple form. We ask people to say if their knowledge increased, uh, but uh, what you wanna do honestly is do your best because I think we all know some of the most important things that we do can't be measured. You can run a STEAM program for teen girls 
and you can tell how many girls uh, showed up and you can maybe ask them to fill out a little survey for a candy bar afterwards and ask them you know their thoughts and what difference this made but you can't tell which girl is going to get inspired enough to become an electrical engineer so really you do the best you can with creating objectives. Uh, the objectives are, again, always stated in terms of beneficiaries. Your objective is not to hold five programs. That's your method. Your objective is that 100 people will attend those programs. Uh, and as I just mentioned, they're not methods and they are smart. I'm guessing that at this point, there's probably nobody who hasn't seen this acronym, but we're going to, uh, we're gonna just go over it again because this is so important. Smart objectives are specific, they are measurable, and that measurable is gonna come into play when we get to your evaluation. And evaluation is an extremely important component of a grant proposal and one that's very hard to do. Uh, it's achievable. You know you can pull it off. It's relevant. It actually means something. It means something in terms of a step towards solving that need, solving that problem in your community, making that change in the world you want. And it's time limited. This is going to happen over such and such a period of time, which is generally over the period of the grant or more accurately over the period of the grant, uh, less whatever time you may need to do the reporting. So um, do we have any uh, questions so far on objectives? I have not seen any questions yet. Okay, I think a lot of us uh, who've been dealt with strategic planning, uh, repeat the part about method. Yeah, your objectives are not the method uh, in terms of the, uh, the method is what you do. So you would hold a pro you would offer a program five times. The objectives are going to be what they do, and an, like an output objective would be 100 people come to those programs. So it's always stated in terms of beneficiary, and you don't want to mix the two up. You don't want to mix up your objectives and method. Uh, and an outcome objective might be that uh, you ask for their comments and they say it provided some value or they learned something or you do just a quick little, could you fill out this questionnaire? Well, let's do a breakout. And the first breakout is, is on objectives. And what is one objective for your project? Uh, and is it smart? You know, can you evaluate it? Uh, is, is it very specific? Can you, is it, does it mean something? Is it relevant? Objectives are really hard. They're probably my least favorite part of a proposal, but they are very important. Approaching other libraries for ideas. It's difficult of speaking to businesses in person. Yes, yeah, small communities may not have the statistical data you need, such as who needs GED. Uh, one strategy I've used on that front before is you kind of get the stats for a larger area, you know, whereas 20% of adults don't have a GED, obviously that's wrong, but so many percent of adults don't have a GED. And then we have this many adults in your community. And you don't necessarily say that uh, it's an exact, but you can kind of say, this is what we know, that you know nationally this is happening. We have this many people in that group. So uh, diversifying the collection, yep. Yeah. Increase circulation, that's a good one for collection development. Yeah, estimating data will work sometimes. I mean, you will not always have the solid numbers. Uh, youth recidivism, you know, that is, wow, that is, a, that is a problem in the world that definitely needs to be changed, so hats off to you. So, well, great, as I said, th this is the single hardest part of a grant proposal for me. This is probably my, least liked part. So if you pull it off well, you are doing great. So, okay, boss voice and since we write an objective using a percentage, it's good. Yeah, pro projects can be small, you know, and, uh, you know, if it's a small project, you're probably going for a small amount of money. 
uh, it's probably not going to be as elaborate a grant proposal. I mean, there's a big difference between going for a $500 grant from a local corporation versus a, a $500,000 grant from the feds. So, so let's move on. This is what everybody loves. We are on to methods, which is this is the actual work to be done because we all get a, a we all get excited about projects. And as we talked about with the grant logic, you have a plan. And what you are doing in essence with a funder is you are offering, offering to be the working hands to put their money to work to make sure that something good happens in the earth. Uh, so this is your solution. You've had, you know what the need is, you know which change you wanna see, and now this is how you're going to accomplish it. So the methods, this is typically the biggest section in a grant proposal. Uh, what will you do? Who on staff, who volunteers, who on your board? Uh, you know, what maybe volunteers from another organization who's, decide, who's agreed to help you, who's going to do it? Um, what is the timeline? Some grants, I've done federal grants that required a formal timeline. Haven't seen a lot of others that do it. Uh, regardless, you'd want a timeline anyway, because you'd want to know when all the critical milestones were. You'd want to make sure that you could accomplish what you need to accomplish in the time allotted. Um, who's going to be served? Uh, you know, you are going to reach out to this particular community. What is the geographic area? If you're in a library, of course, you have a legal service area. Um, and what resources are needed? And we're going to come back in budgets to what resources are needed. You don't want to do the full budget or justification in here. But if you need equipment, you say you need equipment. If you need, uh, uh, if, if you need paper and stuff for doing flyers even, this is where you put it. Um, and when you get to the budget, everything in your methods has got to show up in your budget. So these are the kind of things you're going to put in the project slash methods portion. So your methods should be very concrete and specific. We keep coming back to this. Uh, they should flow logically. Uh, you know, uh, they should they should do something to fix fix whatever the need the problem is. They should work towards your goals and they should achieve the objectives. They should realistically be achievable. And uh, I'm notorious for biting off more than I can chew. You know, don't bite off more than you can chew on this. And they need to make sense to an out, outsider. Um, when I first looked grant, when I first learned grant writing, they talked about the grandma rule, uh, which I think is horribly unfair to grandmas. It was, you know, could you take your proposal, hand it to your grandmother, and she'd understand it. But my grandmother was sharp as a tack till the day she died. So I prefer to call this the oblivious other, someone who has no clue what you're doing. If you handed it to them, would it make sense? And there's a good reason for this, because you cannot assume your grant reviewers are going to be experts in the field. You cannot assume they will know what you're trying to do if you don't get it very clear as to what it is you're going to do. So make it make sense to an outsider. So is your method unique? Um, do you have special organizational expertise that is going to make this method work? Um, is this something other people have overlooked that you think will really work? You know, kind of a, an innovative approach. You know, do you have the strong community ties that are going to make this really uh, an effective method? Um, and are you coming up, you know, are you building a better mousetrap? Are you coming up with a more effective solution than other pe people um, uh, have done? So uh, those are some of the things that will make your method unique. Some of the questions to answer, uh, you know, obviously you're going to want to focus mostly on the plan, what it is you're going to do, but you can work in, how did you choose these methods? You know, what was the reason you choose them? How are they going to achieve your objectives? And how do you know? How do you know this is going to work? And I thought I saw one question come up. Let's take a little break for questions. Uh, what do you mean by time limited? Yeah, and the SMART acronym. It could be the objective Typically, it's going to be time limited to the length of the grant, but not necessarily. You're going to have to report on the length of the grant. So when you write your objectives as something to be evaluated, 
there's going to be that, but um, you don't, you can, if the impact of the grant, and we will talk about that a little bit in terms of sustainability is going to extend, you can certainly make one of your objectives that it's going to extend. And, uh, you know, when you get to the evaluation, just say that, you know, this is this is going to extend beyond the project for this, this, and this reason, and these are the reasons we believe it. Um, I hope that answers your question, Lisa. Is that close? All right. So we're going to go to another breakup, and the question is, how did you choose your methods, and how do you know they will work? Um, you know, if you are watching this on a recording, pause the video, write down your thoughts. Okay, it looks like I think we have everyone back. Uh, if you had any takeaways, uh, please share them in the um, chat. Uh, did somebody have a really cool method you loved? And uh, so please share what came out of your discussion. Oh, that's an interesting, Rachel. Getting things set up so another organization can do their work in your space. That's an interesting one. I like that. It's a great way to partner. Uh, Autumn, a collection develop grant method absolutely would be buying books. You'd probably also want to include some, some on the collection development policy in terms of how those books will be selected, where those books will be bought from. Uh, homeless resources, food pantry, et cetera, in a library. I like that. That really shows you're serving people in need. Definitely use state personnel and resources available for help. I know a lot of you from libraries. Uh, we uh, here at the Wyoming State Library, we do a lot of support services for libraries out in the field and other state libraries do too. So if you have a question, if you need help, you know, give them a call, see what they can do. Now we were on evaluation. And when it comes to evaluation, this, this is also hard. I would say the objectives and the evaluation are the hardest parts of the grant. So necessary, but very hard. Um, even a little bit is better than none. What you can evaluate, what you can pin a number on, what you can show uh, is anything you can do in terms of evaluation, even if you can't you know, do a full out hiring an outside evaluator um, is going to help your, your uh, grant proposal. So evaluation is basically, did it work? And you know the sort of corollary to that is that, uh, were there things that could have worked better that you will change the next time you do something like this? Um, how do we know it? You know, did uh, we ask people? Did we count heads? Did we take a survey? It's going to speak to your objectives. And if you set up your objectives properly, your evaluation is going to be a lot easier. To a certain extent, they kind of have to be done in conjunction with each other. It's, let, you know, more at the same time rather than sequential. And it's going to use hard and soft data. It's going to use those numbers. It's going to use uh, participant experiences, testimonials, comments, those sorts of things that uh, speak to whether this project actually worked, whether the money was well spent that the funder gave you, and whether this is something that maybe should be continued. So the, the other thing I keep coming back to is that evaluation Yes, it's essential to a solid grant proposal. It is also for you. It is so important for you because if you get into whatever business you're in to do good in the world, uh, there's no sense doing something that's not doing any good. So this is going to guide and inform your future projects. And it's also going to go into that file we talked about in the beginning of materials you need as you search for more grants to support your future grant proposals as evidence of track record of success. So some evaluation methods that get used, uh, there are situations where you can do a pre-test or post-test. That's not real common in libraries that you can do that, but it is something that's used in some types of projects. You can have uh, people do evaluations afterwards. We will obviously be doing an evaluation of this workshop. You can do surveys. There are some survey resources in the resources folder. Um, so, and there are different ways to do those surveys. One of the things about surveys is you want to make sure, <clears throat> sure that the method you use isn't leaving people out. 
Uh, you might have, as I said, testimonials from people who participated, uh, comments, and you might on a really large project, particularly a pilot, a demonstration project, if you were going big, you might have an outside evaluator. And if you have an outside evaluator, that's something that's probably going to be built into the cost of your grant, the amount that you're requesting, the amount that you're bringing to the table, it'll be part of your budget. So uh, again, uh, evaluation and objectives, really they go hand in hand. Because as you write objectives, you're gonna have to ask yourself if they can be evaluated and how. And if you do that right, then your evaluation really writes itself. You just go back to the objectives and we said this was going to happen and this was how we were gonna measure it. So if you write, set up your objectives right, as hard as evaluation is, it is uh, a lot easier when you get those objectives right. So, and again, a little is better than none. We all know some of the most important things we do can't be measured. Measure what you can. And I will give you a pro tip that even if you can't draw a straight line from uh, what you did to what happened, say what happened. You know, maybe it's not a, maybe it was not a direct, direct result, but if you said you were gonna do this good in the world and this thing happened, include it even if you can't draw an absolute, you know, straight line from it. So let's go ahead and let's go to the next breakout, which is evaluation. And the question is, what would success look like for your project and how will you evaluate it? Okay. I think we have everyone back. I hope you had some good discussion. Um, if you have any good takeaways, anything that struck you, any good discussions, uh, please share it in the chat box. Yes, Rachel, circulation easily. It's always good to have one objective that's really easy to measure. <laughs> you know, that's a great question, Gailey. If it wasn't successful, it's not the end of the world. Um, it means that next time you'll know. Um, if you have been in communication with your funder throughout the process, uh, you know, you should have been keeping them apprised. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's like a, we tried it and it didn't work, but here's what we've learned. The big thing is what you have learned to share that with your funder, to share that with other people. Yeah, Katie, they uh, already gave you the money, but if you in good faith did the project and it just didn't pan out, uh, they're, they're not going to come after you for it, I promise. They, they really don't want the money back. Um, it, it creates accounting headaches, actually. I, I once worked uh, some uh, grantee sent me a check for six dollars and some cents they hadn't spent and all I could think of was buy some paper and charge it to the grant and please don't make me account for this. So they really don't want their money back, but they will if the project didn't pan out, they will want to know what you've learned. Any other takeaways? Yes, statistics always, the statistics can be explained. Uh, they missed their goals, but it's because of the pandemic. Statistics always need context. Um, we had one a few years ago where a uh, library changed its circulation policies to have lengthier checkouts, which patrons loved, but which impacted their circulation stats. And so if you just looked at the circ stats, it looks like, well, their circulation is going down. But the the books were out of the building the same amount of time and the patrons were happier so it always needs um, context oh that's a good idea eliza says that uh, somebody doing emergency connectivity fund uh, doing a simple survey when they turn in their white to for customers when they turn in their wi-fi hotspots yes anytime you can do a simple survey and you know you want to keep them short and again there are some resources on putting together good surveys in the resources folder. That question, I guess, kicks off our questions. Jackie, that's a good question. How long should you wait for feedback? And if you send out a survey, how long should you wait to close it or wait for results? Um, it really depends, uh, but don't wait too long. Um, you know, it depends on how you're doing it. Uh, you know, we did, there was one thing I was involved in that did a survey that was on library computers and they kept it open so many weeks. You don't want to extend it forever. 
we use SurveyMonkey, which allows us to close at a certain time and to send reminder emails. But, uh, you know, if you can't get a survey that's completed at, you know, at the time it's happening, you probably want to, um, you know, keep it a reasonable time, couple weeks, couple, three weeks. Like I said, really depends on what you're doing. Uh, the resources that I just mentioned in the reminder email we sent you out yesterday, there was a link to a resources folder. So you will have access to all that. We've got information in there on surveys, statistics, uh, how to find funders, where you can find more grant training, because I certainly encourage you to listen to more, more per, per people than just me. So they are, uh, okay, follow up the survey question. We want to get more families into the library. I might go three on that one. You said two weeks be enough. Uh, two weeks are probably enough, but I probably go three on that one. Deborah on surveys for SurveyMonkey, you, uh, we write them up ourselves. They don't come prepackaged. Among those resources, uh, as I said earlier, if uh, you're not tired of hearing me talk, there is a video series linked that I did a few years ago on doing surveys. They're short videos. It's not nearly as long as this grant workshop, and that will help you write surveys. There's a lot of, and it's linked also to some additional resources on writing surveys. I don't see any more questions. So thank you for joining us for uh, session three.